Welcome to Change is Simple's online learning. My name is Dom. I'm one of the lead educators here at Change is Simple. Change is Simple is a nonprofit that teaches students about climate education and sustainability. Instead of lectures and textbooks, we inject games, activities, curiosity, and creativity right into their classrooms. Our curriculum empowers students to make a difference in their world. We educate about 7,000 students right in their classrooms every year. Now, you can join us right here online for a new series of fun-filled activities that you can do right at home with all of your friends here at Change is Simple. Hope to see you there. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Change is Simple's online learning. Ethan here again for yet another lesson on, you guessed it, fish. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most amazing travelers in the entire animal kingdom, the Pacific salmon. We're going to dive deep today and learn about every aspect of the salmon's life, starting from an egg to its journey to the sea, and finally its miraculous journey home. To start, we're going to watch a quick video about the Pacific salmon, and then after, it's time for some arts and crafts. We're going to design our very own super cool charts that show us the transformation salmon undergo as they change their habitats. Let's get started. The Pacific salmon is one of the most important keystone species in the entire ocean. Throughout the various stages of a salmon's life, it supports an incredible amount of life and represents one of the largest exchangers of nutrients in the entire animal kingdom. Salmon are so important to their local ecosystems that native peoples once looked upon them as mystical, subject of sacred rites and ceremonies. Now it's not too difficult to explain why natives worship these fish. Imagine an animal that is born in the mountains, travels backward on river currents hundreds of miles to the sea, disappears into the deep ocean, only to reappear hundreds of times larger and return upstream to the very place it was born to spawn. Pacific salmon include the Chinook, Sockeye, Coho, Chum, and Pink. Their natural geographic range extends generally from California, up and around the Pacific Rim, and down the Asian coast to Japan. In the United States, they span an area from the Pacific coast all the way to the Rocky Mountains. Salmon are known as an anadromous fish, meaning they spawn in freshwater but live a greater part of their lives in the sea. The stream provides more security for the eggs, but food is limited, so young fish go out to feed in the virtually limitless ocean pastures where they can grow large. Salmon start their journey as eggs, laid amongst gravel and streams far from the ocean. Salmon can lay between 2,000 and 6,000 eggs, however only 15% usually survive. When first born, these tiny salmon are known as alevins. They are hatched with big yolk sacs that enable them to grow for weeks in the safety of the gravel. After a while, these salmon then become known as fry, meaning they have absorbed their yolk sacs and are ready to feed. They munch down on larvae, insects, and even other fish eggs. After this stage of life, the salmon then becomes a par, an older, juvenile fish ready to head downstream. These fish hang around in estuaries near the ocean until it is time to make their saltwater debut. To survive the saltwater, these fish undergo a process called smultification, where they undergo dramatic transformations in their body shape, color, and physiology, meaning the inside of their bodies. These smolts are now ready to take on the ocean. In the late fall, Millions of these young salmon abandon North America and swim up to 15 miles a day into the deep ocean. At this point, they are considered adult salmon. Now when it comes time, years and years in the future, adult salmon that have ranged into the ocean as far as 2,500 miles turn back towards home for the first and final time. Once the salmon venture back into the freshwater, they undergo the most dramatic transformation yet. They turn bright red, their back begins to curve, and their nose starts to have a hook to the front of them. Now, salmon at this point do not eat, and they use all the nutrients in their body to help them on their journey. Traveling against the current, facing rapids, waterfalls, and predators, these animals climb nearly a mile above sea level, traveling 20 miles per day. The salmon does not eat or rest, its only goal to return to where it was born to lay eggs and ultimately complete its life cycle. After they spawn and lay their eggs, the salmon will then die. Roderick Haig Brown once wrote, the death of a salmon is a gesture of great abundance. Salmon bring the wealth of the ocean, transformed into their own bodies into mountains and streams, feeding eagles and bears with their own carcasses. In fact, 20 species of birds, shrews, skunks, raccoons, otters, even squirrels and deer rely on salmon for nutrients. 
Salmon are also vastly important for the forests. Their bodies act as critical fertilizer for the trees, allowing trees near salmon runs to be the, among the largest in the world. These forests are known as salmon forests because of the critical role the fish has in sustaining this ecosystem and all its inhabitants. However, salmon are in need of help just like the tuna. Overfishing, dams, and logging have destroyed much of the Pacific salmon's habitat. By using less paper products and advocating for land conservation, we can help the salmon and the ecosystems that rely on them.